So tell me what's going on with the orthodontics and the teeth and everything. Well, for the last two or three years, I've noticed a lot of the popping and pain every morning when I wake up. I cannot chew steaks anymore. I cannot chew gum, anything really chewy. My mouth gets super tired and sore. When did you have the braces? Um, whenever, eight, let's see, eighth grade. Junior high. Junior high. So tennis years ago, 12, something like that. Actually longer than that, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm okay. Um, <clears throat> do you remember having problems after the braces came off, chewing, chewing gum, for no. example? So at what age do you think this started? Just a few years ago. So probably so about... 28. Got it. Okay. Um, what about muscles being tight in the morning? You ever wake up? When you have trouble, say, touching the side of your face? Right. Or your forehead? Well, I always have sinus pressure. I'm mm -hmm. not sure if that's related to it, but um, it is always extremely sore in the morning, and I have to kind of stretch it out. Okay. Okay. Relax. Bite hard. Open big. Bite hard. Open big. Bite hard. Open big. Bingo. Good enough. If you're, you're going to do something like clench, it kind of makes sense that my right and my left half of my body are going to do things about equal, not necessarily 100% equal, but if there's 50 units here, it's going to be about 50 here, right? Because I'm going straight down. But you're way off. 2.5, 10.3, for example. See, that's not right. And um, 2.0 to 5.8, that's your masseters. Those are those vertical ones here. That's not right. It should be, you know, one's 5.8 and one should be about 5.6 or 6.0 maybe, but not, not a factor of two off. You see where I'm going with that? So this gives me objective data. This isn't just, no offense to the chiropractor or anyone else, but it's not just palpating. And it's not just taking models and using the articulator and, you know, adjusting randomly and hoping for the best. They're trying in the old way to relax muscles, but we can actually show them to relax muscles. See the difference? It's the old ways are subjective, or the old ways involve making splints. And splint, um, splints basically, it's kind of like taking an aspirin for a headache. So the aspirin will probably help my headache as long as it lasts. When, I, when it wears off, the headache's back. Um, the splint will probably help me with my TMD issues, my pain in my jaws and my muscles. But shortly after I remove it, the cause is back. Right. Which, what is the cause? The cause oftentimes is misaligned teeth. And the muscles, joints, and teeth that aren't in harmony with one another. Okay? Isn't that our whole medical world? We treat the symptoms we don't treat. The, the cause. Way. I'm trying to treat your cause. Right. Yeah. That's, that's exactly right. That's the new, the new medical <laughs> model. The new, it, should, it, should be, it should be preventative. And this is kind of a preventative thing. You see, because, like, for example, you were a little worried that I'm going to be grinding on teeth, and I don't blame you. But let me tell you something, you're doing it on your own, naturally, in an uncontrolled manner. So should I have not intervened if you've never met me? And you wouldn't have found this anywhere else around here, for sure, um, or most places. Um, and assuming we're going to get the good result that I, I'm almost positive we will, um, in this dimension that you found us and the other that you didn't, when you're my age or older, if you were to take models of your teeth, you'll see there was heavier wear versus the way where the things have been adjusted. You see where I'm going with that? And when I talk adjustment, I'm not talking like what the chiropractor does. What I'm doing here is very permanent. You know, it's not scary permanent, it's a good permanent. Because I'm giving you an aspirin that lasts the rest of your life. Actually, you don't even need the aspirin because I've removed the cause of the headache. Now, if you're in poor condition and you run, you're, you're like short of breath, you can't breathe. Your cells aren't used to it. Right? Um, and all of a sudden, you're, you're more likely, if you're in poor condition, to be sore the next day. Let's say you went for a run, your legs are aching, you can't even sit down. Why are your legs ache? Well, because the cells aren't used to the oxygen, they're not real efficient, so they're going to a different way of producing energy that's very inefficient, called the Krebs cycle. If you ever took biology, you've probably heard of it. The Krebs cycle is an anaerobic way of producing energy without oxygen. Like weight lifters, they're anaerobic, and doctors are always saying you need to do an aerobic thing because you need to condition the cells. When you produce energy this way, the anaerobic way, it's very inefficient and it spits out something called lactic acid. And that's a very toxic thing to the cells. So you're still young enough to where you really don't feel it. If you're my age, I'm past 40, you're gonna, like if you, if I were you, and you never addressed this, you'd probably be hurting even worse. What do you mean hurting? Well, 
when your muscles are always doing this and spazzing, they're always burning through this stuff and they're pushing over to the anaerobic way no matter how well conditioned they are. Because they're always, it's not right, it's not healthy. So you're spitting out all this lactic acid and that's why you're always having trouble chilling. That's why you're, it's a toxic thing. And it takes time for your body to clear that excess lactic acid. So there's a limit as to what you can clear in a given moment of time or in a day. Okay? So if your muscles are producing too much of the crud, mm -hmm. and why would they be doing that? Because they're working too hard. In other words, when a muscle's at rest, it should be resting. It shouldn't be contracting and expending energy and needing to make more ATP and needing to create more energy. You see what I'm saying? So when, if, how do we control that? We control that because, I hope I'm not boring you death. We control that because um, your teeth are wedged into bone with these little fibers called periodontal ligaments. Periodontal ligaments are exquisitely sensitive and they're super fast to the brain. So, example, you go to a restaurant, you take a bite of your food, you spit out a hair. Very gross, right? It happens almost instantaneously. No one ever thinks about it, but I do. Why does that happen? Because the hair, as you're chewing, you compress. Your periodontal ligaments are that sensitive. They feel that hair, which is a tenth of a millimeter. In about three nanoseconds, there's direct connection to the brain, okay? It synapses there. Normally, nerves have multiple synapses. It takes longer. This is one of nature's very important things. They want to protect your eyes, so blink of an eye is a very fast response. And the periodontal ligament, those are the two fastest cranial nerves in the body. The cranial nerves are like involved head and neck, okay? So, that being said, you have a direct connection, which is biologically expensive, so nature thinks it's very important to protect your teeth. Why? Because, say it was 200 plus years ago, you break a tooth, expose the nerve, you get an infection, there's a decent chance you're going to croak because they didn't know how to treat that back then. And a lot of times you get away with it, but sometimes you wouldn't. People would die years ago from tooth-borne infection. So, I'm just getting a little too intense, but um, the point is, you sense that, you sense that uh, hair, and then about four or five nanoseconds later, the muscle is responding, push, I want it gone. It's foreign, it can break my tooth, it doesn't belong there, it shouldn't be in that bolus of food. My brain has told me so. It's subconscious, don't even think about it, it happens that quickly. So, why do I say that? Because if you have little tiny discrepancies in the way your back teeth are rubbing one another, a similar thing will happen. Your brain is acutely aware of it, and it's always asking the muscles to make it go away. So not necessarily just the tongue muscles pushing the hair out, the muscles that are growing your teeth around. Your brain is aware that this doesn't belong there and it's saying, I want you gone. And it's not gone. So if it's not gone, the muscle's always doing its job, but it can never get it done all the way. Because that deflection, that little speed bump in the back is always there. So it's always burning through all this extra stuff and it's spitting out lactic acid because it's exceeding its protocol. You can't clear it fast enough. And all of a sudden you try to chew that gum and I can't really chew gum, I'm real sore. Why do you think you're sore? Why do you think you're sore when we just put that electrode on your, on one of your muscles there? The muscles always spasm, shouldn't be. See, so there's, there are reasons for what I'm doing here. Okay, let's do this for real now. Open real big for me. You hear that pop? Yeah. Okay. Which side did that come from? Uh, mainly this side. Left side? Okay, right, bite home hard. One, two, go right, and open big. That was perfect. Now here's some really cool stuff. Watch this. This is a movie of your bite. This is telling me objectively where you're hitting too hard. For example, look at this back here on number 15, which is your upper left back molar. And way too hard. This is typical. And when you swing off to your right, this kite should be shooting up towards your canine. Canines separate back teeth. Instead, you're rubbing along these back molars. So, in your case, to, we're, we're going to adjust the back a little bit, but we're probably not going to be able to fix this until we bond to your canine. Do you remember I talked to you about that yesterday? Mm -hmm. So, when I lengthen that canine from the inside, kind of make the ramp a little thicker, all of a sudden your jaw is going to be doing what it's supposed to do, and the muscles are going to be doing it more efficiently. And they're not going to be always hyperactive because they're not going to pick up all those interferences. Right. And there's not going to be that excess lactic acid. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Okay. When would you expect the popping to stop? You're probably still going to pop some, but it probably won't be as pronounced. Yeah. And it probably won't be as violent. And you're probably going to be less inclined to fall down 
when I say fall down, in other words, there's a path. Like, you're what's called a Piper class one, which is still the healthiest. And there's a two, three, four, and five, which is really bad. You're somewhere between one and two. And you're probably gonna stay there because you're more relaxed, you're less likely to fall down into a three or a four or a five. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I'm talking over a lifetime. Home and left, all right? And right on hard. One, two, go left. Perfect. Here, open big for a sec. Close down most of the way. Is that still tender back there? No. How about over here? No, not at all. It's really not. What do you think? <laughs> Told you. <laughs> We're not done yet. So weird. We're getting close though. It already feels a lot better. You see? Good. Try clenching. Clenching probably feels a little bit like more table legs touch, right? Yeah, it's just, it's just smoother even. and even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited for you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you get about 70% of resolution your bite home and go left of the muscle immediately <coughs> before you walk out this door. Your bite home, go left. It takes the last 30%, about two to four weeks, right? That lactic acid, that toxic stuff. Right on average for someone. You know what's really cool? Remember this, right? right. And that's gone, right? Yeah, completely. Yeah. Yeah. Here too? Okay. Yeah, see, that's... that's. It doesn't hurt at all. Remember I was telling you the way the normal guys do it, the esoteric way of trying to relax the right. muscles? That muscle is what they're trying to relax. Mm -hmm. And I'm messing with all of them, not just right. the one. Normal dentistry, like your chiropractor he's referring to, their goal is to relax the lateral pterygoid. Right. We're, we're sinking all of these muscles. Right. And there's still more that we can't even study without, like, needles. Yeah. Stick, and no one's going to do that. I, I wouldn't <laughs> want that. Yeah, that's unnecessary. Okay, tell me what it feels like compared to the beginning. It just fit, it feels like it fits in to each other mm -hmm. instead of just being... Clenched real hard. Would that have hurt you an hour yes. and a half ago? Does it hurt now? No. Yeah. Hey, when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what, today is two days later? Yes. How's it been? It's been good. I've been, I've not had any soreness. I've had a little bit of popping still in my jaw, but, um, you, I, Can you chew gum? I've been able to chew gum with no pain. Yeah. Can you chew lettuce? Yes. Um, is there anything else? I mean, you sleeping okay with it? Yes. Bite feels more balanced? Definitely. Especially up front. Yeah. Kind of even? Yes. Yeah. Uh, how about the tension in your neck and all that, the muscle spasms? That's all gone. Yeah? Yeah. So two days later. Mm -hmm. So your jaw was sore the first night, but the other right. night it was wrong. Right. Awesome. Cool. <laughs>